What I have here uh, is a copy of Donald Trump's tax returns. We have his federal tax return for one year, for 2005. I believe this is the only set of the president's federal taxes that reporters have ever gotten a hold of. Uh, what we have are these two pages, front and back, from the same 1040 form that you might have filled out when you file your taxes. Um, and in terms of what's on here, let me give you the basics. Um, aside from the numbers being large, uh, these pages are straightforward. He paid uh, $38 million, looks like $38 million in taxes. Uh, he took a big write down of $103 million, more on that later. Uh, if you add up the lines for income, he made more than $150 million in that year, mazel tov. Uh, we got these pages. We got this document today from a Pulitzer Prize winning investigative journalist who's better on financial matters than almost anybody else in the business. His name is David K. Johnston. Uh, these pages turned up the other day in his mailbox. David will join us live here in just a moment. Um, but because nobody has had the president's taxes before, we didn't know what to expect. Um, when we showed this 2005 return to the White House to ask him if it's real, uh, we sent this over to the White House tonight, and the White House responded basically with, yep. Uh, I'm going to read you the, the White House statement on this tonight. Quote, before being elected president, Mr. Trump was one of the most successful businessmen in the world with the responsibility to his company, his family, and his employees to pay no more tax than legally required. That being said, Mr. Trump paid $38 million even after taking into account large-scale depreciation for construction on an income of more than $150 million, as well as paying tens of millions of dollars in other taxes, such as sales and excise taxes and employment taxes. And this illegally published return proves just that. Despite this substantial income figure and tax paid, it is totally illegal to steal and publish tax returns. The dishonest media can continue to make this part of their agenda while the president will focus on his, which includes tax reform that will benefit all Americans. White House statement for tonight. For the record, the First Amendment gives us the right to publish this return. It is not illegally published. Nor are we fake. Pinch me, I'm real. But good on the White House. Uh, for acknowledging the return um, as proof of what the president made and paid that year. Uh, here's the thing, though. A full tax return for someone like Donald Trump would be a lot longer than the two pages that we have here. There are all kinds of schedules and notes and attachments that could be involved, all containing information about the president and his money. Why will he not release his taxes, his full taxes? the way other presidents have done. Why not let the public see the information for themselves? We have obtained this, but this is all we've got. This tells us something, but he still has disclosed, uh, certainly willingly disclosed, nothing compared to all other modern presidents. Joining us now is David K. Johnston. He's editor and founder of DCReport.org, which has posted this document as of a few minutes ago. He's also the author of The Making of Donald Trump and the Pulitzer Prize winning financial reporter uh, who found the president's 2005 tax returns in his mailbox. David, thank you for being here. Delighted. Um, first of all, congratulations on this, this scoop. What can you tell us about how how you got these pages, how you got this document. Came in the mail over the transom, and there is absolutely nothing improper about journalists, if you haven't solicited something, uh, getting it over the transom. And by the way, let me point out, it's entirely possible that Donald sent this to me. Donald Trump has, over the years, leaked all sorts of things. The uh, very sleazy girl-on-girl -girl pictures of the First Lady in the New York Post may have come from Donald. The uh, front pages of the state tax returns that we had uh, that were sent to the New York Times and the New York Daily News last fall may have come from Donald. Donald has a long history of leaking material about himself when he thinks it's in his interests. Um, do you believe, do we have reason to believe that those documents that you just described there were leaked by him or is it just a possibility? It, it's a possibility and it, it could have been leaked by someone in his direction. Mm -hmm. But with Donald, you know, you never know. Donald creates his own reality. And uh, he, he says things that aren't true. He says things and then denies he said them. He lives in this world that isn't the world of you and, where you and I live of verifiable facts. So, yes, I think I have to include that in the list of possibilities of where it came from. Mm -hmm. When you look at this document, when you look at these... Uh, these numbers, obviously we don't have the supporting uh, schedules and the sort of appendices right. that you get in, in big tax returns. Um, do these numbers 
seem right to you? Obviously, the yeah. White House statement to us is, is reiterating the $150 million income number and the $38 million paid number. Those, all those numbers seem right to you? Yes. And, and uh, they fit the things we know from other public records about how Donald does business. For example, the dividends that he gets are primarily not what are called qualified dividends. That suggests they come from not big companies like ExxonMobil, but uh, privately held enterprises. Uh, they show almost no tax-exempt interest, about $49,000. That would imply at the time maybe $900,000 of municipal bonds. Not much. I mean, there are lots of college professors out there my age who have $900,000 in municipal bonds. Um, what's most important about this tax return, though, Rachel, is that under the regular tax system, remember, we have two tax systems. Well-to-do people, you and I, file effectively calculate our tax twice, the regular tax system and the alternative minimum tax. If we didn't have the alternative minimum tax and Donald Trump, in writing, wants to end the alternative minimum tax, he would have paid taxes at a lower rate than the bottom half of taxpayers, the poor in this country who make less than $33,000. Now think about that, on $153 million almost of income, he would have paid a little over $5 million, less than 3.5%, less than the half of taxpayers who make under $33,000. As it is, because of the alternative minimum tax, he paid $36.5 million, not the 38 the White House statement says. They're counting his self-employment tax, which is uh, payroll taxes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, $36.5 million, he paid 24%. You know who pays 24% in this country? Married couples with two incomes, like my wife and I, who make about $400,000 a year. Donald Trump and his wife that year made $418,000 a day. And the point of this is, the top in this country, people at the top, are not burdened the way we suggest. I was in... Uh, let me let me stop let me stop yeah. you and let me restate some of that back to you because sure. you're a tax expert and those of us who just pay taxes and aren't experts in them I want to say it back to you and you tell me if I'm getting it right if there weren't something called the alternative minimum tax you can tell from these from this 1040 from these two pages from his tax return in 2005 if there weren't an alternative minimum tax he'd be paying what percent it's right on line 44 he would have paid 5.3 million dollars which is 24 percent of his $152.7 million of positive income. Um, and that's in large part because he was able to say he had negative income of $103 million. Okay. So because he paid, because there is an alternative minimum tax. They disregarded most of the negative income. Yeah. He had to pay taxes, he had to pay more in taxes, but he still got a benefit. You know why? Because at the top, People are supposed to be paying 35% that year, 39.6% this year. Ah. But if you're in the alternative minimum tax, you only pay 28%. Okay. That's a 20% discount on your taxes. Would you like to get a 20% discount on your taxes? That's what Donald Trump got here. So the issue that, I mean, I, I tried to lay out at the top of the show reasons why people are so interested in his tax returns. The White House has made this issue and saying it's only reporters who care. People don't care. This was litigated in the election when he didn't release his tax returns and people voted for him anyway. There are a number of reasons to be interested in his tax returns. And I think a number of reasons why people continue to and, be. And most importantly, what we don't have here, which is this describes the types of income but not the sources. Okay, so That's what we need to know. We need Who to, is the president getting money from? Well, we need to know, A, sources of his income, whether or not he's beholden to somebody. We also need to know whether all the things he said about himself and his wealth uh, and his charitableness and all those things are true. But we also need to know if he is going to take actions as president in terms of tax policy that are going to benefit him. And you're or saying, benefit his benefactors. Yes. Yes, I mean, it's a very complicated, tangled issue. I mean, here's a simple question to ask. Every other president's released their returns. We have uh, Hillary Clinton's and Bill Clinton's returns back to the 1970s. Why is it that Donald Trump is so insistent that we're not to see his tax returns? What, there must be something uh, hiding in his returns. You know, I've been at this for 50 years. I started as a teenager doing investigative reporting. And every time some high-level politician wants to hide something, it always turns out there's a reason. They've got something to hide. Um, I have I, lots of things we can think of that Donald Trump has to hide. Uh, including sources of income and his connections to the Russian oligarchs, who are essentially, Rachel, a state-sponsored network of international criminals. And you've got to think about it in that way and understand that's their position in the world. And Donald Trump really is desperate that we don't see where his money comes from. And this is a man who we know 
was very deeply involved with one of the biggest drug kingpins in America in the 1980s. He risked his casino license just to show his loyalty to that man. He did business with the biggest mobsters in New York. For years, he traveled with a, uh, the son of the head of the reputed Russian mob boss, himself a twice convicted felon. He says, I wouldn't know if he was in the room, even though they were together all the time traveling. And many other criminals he has associated with throughout his life. So it's particularly relevant for us to say, where'd you get the money? David K. Johnston is the editor and founder of DCReport.org. He is the one who obtained this Donald Trump tax return 2005. David, can you stay with us for a moment? Sure. We're going to bring my colleague Chris Hayes into this discussion. And I want to get back to this issue about the sources of Trump's money and also the source of this document tonight. We have uh, published this 2005 tax return from the president uh, on mattoblog.com. We've also linked to David K. Johnson's extensive reporting on this on DCReport.org. Uh, David's back with us in a moment. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.